Hello! Today we're talking about key lighting. What are the different types of key lights and how to use them technically and in cinematography. This is the first video in a new series that I'm going to start for people wanting to learn about the basics of cinematography and lighting. So make sure you stick until the end because there's a whole lot of useful information coming your way. To begin with, a key light is the strongest source of light in any scene. It's the windows in a living room, the candlelight in a dark night, the moonlight, the sun, or even the practicals in a room. What we have to master and understand about a key light is that it serves the story for cinematography and continuity purposes. Diving into that, in terms of cinematography, a key light could be hard or soft, constant or interval, high or low. At the same time, it can be coming from any direction. It does not have to come only from the front. All these variables and variations have different personalities and characteristics that are going to help you craft your visual style. If the key light is hard, you're going to have a lot of deep, harsh shadows. This will give the scene a high contrast look. If, however, your light is soft, the light will wrap around your subjects and objects in the scene, giving you a low contrast look. To get a hard key light, use a Fresnel lens. It's a type of glass lens manufactured specifically for lights so that they could emit light at a certain angle rather than just spread it everywhere. The handy thing about it also is that you could either make it into a spot or a flood. That means that the spot of light coming out is either smaller or bigger. Now to get a soft light, there's a myriad of things that you could do. You could get hard light and just bounce it off of a wall and that reflected light will basically be more diffused. Or you could shine it through some sort of like transparent material, like a diffusion cloth or a bed sheet or a curtain or even some kitchen paper. Of course, there's also professional grade material that can be used with any light that you have. These days, every LED light that you would buy comes with some sort of diffusion straight from the manufacturer. But for me personally, I don't feel that that diffusion is actually soft enough. Just don't forget that these diffusers actually cut the intensity of the light. And another important thing that you need to know about soft lights and diffusers is that they just spread light everywhere. So it's actually a little bit harder to make that light more directional. To cut the light and make it more directional, you could use some black flags or you could use a professional grid that would give the light some sort of like direction. Now here comes the fun part. A key light takes the characteristics of an available light that is available naturally in the scene and imitates it. This breakdown of characteristics of light should always happen with you. You need to see what source of light you're trying to create and you need to take on its characteristics and try and make it with your own lights. Whenever you're outside, even at your home, whenever you're doing anything, just watch how light reacts with surfaces, what are the characteristics of the lights, the different colors and shades and hues of the light. Basically, each light in our normal day life has certain characteristics. And to make the viewer believe that your lighting and cinematography are realistic, you have to nail these characteristics. Let's take some examples and start with a living room. During the day, the living room would be lit mainly from natural light coming from the outside through the windows into that room. So our key light needs to imitate that. So let's break it down. Daylight coming through the windows is around 5000 Kelvin. Kelvin is the unit of measurement used to measure the hue and the color of the light. The higher it goes, the light starts going bluer and bluer and bluer. And the lower it goes, the more yellowish and orangey it becomes. So in case of this natural daylight coming in from the room, what we need to do is find a daylight balanced light or we could use blue gel on a tungsten light to change its temperature. Another word for this color or hue is also temperature. So whenever someone says light's temperature, that's what it means. It means the Kelvin or the color or the hue. Again, the daylight coming from the outside can be hard or soft. If the sun is shining straight through the house, the light is going to have hard light characteristics. If it's just midday, however, the light outside just bounces everywhere on all white surfaces and any reflective surface that it has. So it's coming from all directions and it's very dispersed. And that light coming from the outside just becomes a bunch of diffused white light. Now you could choose your light to be hard or soft depending on your visual style. So if you want it to look like that, great. Or if you want it to look soft, even better. But we need to follow the characteristics of the natural light 
for us to actually be able to achieve a realistic looking light. The key light can also take the form of a sunrise or a sunset. So if you want your scene to have a sunrise look or a sunset look, it will still have it, even if it's indoors. If it's indoors and the sun is rising, usually the color of the light coming through the windows is a little bit bluer and it's very soft. It usually has a very washed out, low contrast feeling. If you want to portray a sunset or late afternoon kind of feel, the light has to be a little bit more yellowish and orangey. Let's say you're on a beach house and you want that really nice, shining, piercing sunset light coming into the rooms to imitate the characteristics of that light. The light needs to be a little bit lower than usual because the sun is actually setting. Next time you see a sunset from an indoor place, focus on how the light enters the room. It enters almost on an eye level and that's where your light needs to be. In this scene, the key light is emulating an interrogation room light bulb. It emits a harsh, hard light that creates deep shadows on people's faces and causes them to look more menacing and is also yellowish in color. These interrogation room lights, specifically in films, are usually portrayed to have some sort of cone-shaped thing on them. And to copy the characteristics of that light, we used the spotlight with a Fresnel lens and we covered it with some black wrap so that we could have that cone shape and have the light only shining on our talent. In yet another example, the key light here is coming from the back of the shot. This is a great example of how to create depth in your scene by placing all your highest highlights in the back of your shot, creating an illusion of an open, endless space. The light coming from the outside is again daylight balanced and is bouncing everywhere and coming through the house when the door is open. The key light could also take form of an interval key light. Now an interval key light is whenever the light is just not constant. So think of things like uh, candlelight or lightning or police sirens or even fireworks, anything that is not constant and continuous lighting. We're going to take the candlelight as an example. And what we need to do is to emulate the characteristics of the candlelight. The characteristics here are random flickering, very, very warm temperature and color. And the intensity of the light is actually quite low and it varies. It's not always the same intensity. Sometimes the flame is bigger, sometimes it's smaller. This is how candle lights are. Our key light needs to work exactly the same. So we sell the effect. Some lights and fixtures can make your life so much easier because they already have these effects built in. When it comes to continuity in lighting, this means that the light needs to make sense. And by making sense, what we mean is that if the light is shining through the windows from the left of screen, it needs to stay that way in any shot that you have. So for example, if I have a wide and I could see that the light is clearly coming in through the windows from the left of screen and is lighting up my character, when I go on a close up to that character, I cannot have the light coming in from the right side. Otherwise, my continuity is gone and it completely doesn't look realistic anymore. So we always need to be careful and we have to know the exact direction of our key light at all times. So it is plain logic, but it's very important whenever you want to move some lights around and take another shot in that same scene. If you're asking yourself, well, why don't we just use the available light that is already there instead of going through all that hassle just to imitate it? Well, you can use it, but the thing is, it forces you to stick with a certain visual style. So if it's very bright, you're going to have to tone it down. If it's very dim, it'll give you a lot of noise. And the most important thing to keep in mind is that nature is so unpredictable. You'll have a beautiful sunny day, and then all of a sudden, it turns into like a crazy storm out of nowhere. In addition to that, the intensity of the light is so erratic, it just constantly changes. If one cloud comes under the sun, the quality of that light and type of that light completely changes. It just limits your cinematographic choices drastically. One of the main reasons that lighting became so important in cinema is not merely the exposure, but the ability of creating different types of lights on any day that you would like. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and got something out of it. So for more videos like this on cinematography and lighting, Subscribe and hit that bell button. And until next time, city stuff out.